Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're making the Seoton Bogi, aka the Korean honeycomb toffee candy, aka the Dargona that got super famous internationally by the Netflix show Squid Game that we're all obsessed with recently. This is a super cheap and fun game that is covered with sugar. You can play among friends or with your kids during this Halloween. And I assure you, everybody gonna love this game. And it practically costs you nothing too. Check it out. Hi new friend, this is Erica right here. I'm a Taiwanese citizen, currently live in America. Cooking and travel is my passion, so I'm here to share with you my favorite Asian recipes. On top of that, I also make videos talking about food knowledge and a history background of the dish on this channel. So if that interests you, please subscribe and keep watching. If you say you've never seen the new Netflix show Squid Game, well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, get out of here. What are you, live in a cave or something? <laughs> Just kidding. Squid Game is a new hit show on Netflix that every single person is talking about recently. Great show, definitely check it out. It is a show that could be fun or deep depending on how you look at it. On the episode 3 of Squid Game, they were playing this game called Sarton Boki, which means sugar paint. And if you watch the show in English, they call it the honeycomb. And if you google this recipe, it's called Dargona for some reason. I don't know, there's so many different names for this thing, but it's basically just a honeycomb candy, toughy candy that have a paint on top. In the show, you'll see players trying to curve out intricate shape from the toffee candy with the needle. And if you break it, you fail. And that basically means you die. Now, the consequences of the honeycomb challenge might be deadly on TV, but it's definitely fun and competitive to make it at home. This is a childhood game in a lot of Korean mom and dad's heart, but I'm really glad that Squid Game bring it back for us so we can enjoy this sweet fun during this Halloween season. Traditionally, Saltong Boki is a type of candy game that they sell on the street in Korea. Each one of this Saltong Boki play will cost you around 2,000 won, which is $1.60 American dollars. And if you successfully curve out the shape without breaking it, you got one more for free. Even though this game is not as popular as back in the day in this generation, but the Squid Game crew actually hired a real Bokki master that is still selling Bokki on the street in Korea to make 700 Bokki play for the shooting. And thanks to a Squid Game, his business is booming again. I saw a news on TV saying how this master guy haven't go home for 7 days straight because how popular this game was and people are lining up that he can't take a break. If you're still thinking what to do with your kids or friend during this Halloween season, especially under COVID, Pokey will be your best choice. It is cheap, fun, simple, and filled with the Halloween spirit, sugar. Making Salton Bogi at home is not rocket science, but it does require some special tool, experience, and some tips and tricks. So today I'll show you what exactly you need for this recipe that you might have it at home already that you don't need to purchase anything else and the tips and trick of how to make this honeycomb candy at home with a detailed recipe as well as the mistake that you might come across and how to fix it. So without further ado, let's get straight into it, shall we? Stolton Boki is basically melted sugar paint. You can easily find a kit on Amazon or Etsy for around $20 to make this candy. But if you already have a stainless steel ladle at home, you really don't need to spend that money. There's only three tools that we really need for this recipe. First is the stainless steel ladle or any metal ladle you can use to heat up on the stove. And the second one is the stirring stick. I'm using a stainless steel chopstick, but you can also use the back of a fork. And the last thing you need is a simple and cute cookie cutter. Also, if you don't have a ladle at home, you can use a pot to melt your sugar as well, but you'll have to make at least four times the amount at once so it will be pourable from the pot. But making a Salton Boki for your first time, it also requires speed and accuracy, so I really wouldn't recommend using a pot for beginners. And also, keep in mind that we're making caramel right here. If you never made it before, make sure you use a cheaper ladle and a cheaper pot that you don't really care about in case of burning. Mine looks perfectly fine, but really there was a little burn inside because I bring it to the campground to make some Salton Boki with my friends and I kind of burn it because it was too dark in there. I can't really control the temperature as well in the wild. But this little really only cost me $7 in a store, so I don't really mind burning it and this will just be my melting candy spoon in the future. Next, we'll need a surface that is non-stick. You can either use a silicone mat like me or a baking tray or even a baking sheet. 
Just make sure you put something below the baking sheet before you pour on a candy because it's really hot and might damage your table. Well, this is not essential, but if you want to make an identical salton bokki from the show, you will need a presser to press down the caramel later. For this, you can be creative by using a back of a pot or a back of a plate, even a cookie jar's lid or a stainless steel measuring cup, which is what I'm using today. Some material works better than the other, but the cooler, the better. So stainless steel is actually a great choice. But if you don't have any of these things, it's totally fine. It will still work, just the candy will be a little bit more puffier. And for the carving, any cookie cutter will work, but the stainless steel ones will work better than the plastic. It's less sticky. I bought this miniature Halloween themed cookie cutter on Amazon for around $10. They're super cute and tiny and perfect for my size of Santon Boki. If you're using a bigger cookie cutter than this, just melt more sugar and make a bigger plate. Now we got all our tools ready, let's look at our ingredients. Sugar and baking soda. Depends on the size of your cookie cutter. You might need at least 1.5 tablespoon of sugar to almost three tablespoons of sugar, depends on the size. And you'll also need around 16 of the teaspoon for the baking powder. If you have no idea how big you wanna make it, you can start with two tablespoons of sugar. If there's too much sugar when you pour in it, you can keep it in the spoon to melt it in the next round. And if it's not enough, next time you'll know you need more. Just give it a try and you'll get the hang of it in a few tries. And all these tool ingredients will be listed in the description box down below as well. Now it's time for us to start making the Sultan Bogi. As you may know, sugar melts slow but gets solid fast. So we want to make sure all our tool and ingredients are set in place before we start. Lay out your baking sheet, then sprinkle a layer of sugar on it to prevent sticking. And also dip your cookie cutter and measuring cup that is used to press down the candy later with sugar as well. And now we're ready to cook. Turn on the heat to low and scoop two scoops of sugar into your ladle. When you just added the sugar, you can stir it periodically with the chopsticks or a back of a fork to check if it start melting yet. As soon as you start to see some liquid sugar showing up, start to stir in the liquid and the solid part together constantly. The sugar will slowly turn from a powder into this, then this, and then this. During the melting process, you want to make sure you're constantly stirring in the solid and the powder part together to prevent from burning. Whenever it feels like you need to, you can always pull your ladle away from the fire to prevent it from burning. And whenever you see the bubble, you should definitely do that. Now you can see that the sugar is completely melted into this dark brown caramel color. You are ready to add in baking powder. The reason why we add in baking powder is because we want to create bubbles in our toffee candy. Before you add in your baking powder, you want to make sure your caramel mix is melted completely, very hot and soft. And whenever you're ready, pull the little away from the heat and add in your baking powder right away and start stirring it as fast as you can. This step, we're basically pumping air into the candy, so the faster, the better. You'll see the caramel start to turn into this light brown color. Just keep stirring until you can feel that the heat is fading away and the candy is starting to get a bit harder, but still liquidy. Then quickly pour it onto your baking sheet and here's the tricky part. The Sarton Boki on the show is very, very thin and wide. But caramel in general doesn't really spread up much, so we need to press it down with some extra tools. And besides that, caramel is very, very sticky as well. So we want to make sure that it's cooling down before we press down the candy, but also if it gets too cold, it's going to be too hard to press. Use another chopstick to test the candy. If you touch it and it's still sticky, then give it a few more seconds. Until you see that when you gently press on the surface of the candy and it only creates a damp but not sticky, it's time. Press down the candy with your presser and let go. If you feel like you need a little bit more, you can do it a several times but very gently. After you're done, then quickly dip your cookie cutter into the sugar and press. I would recommend a stainless steel or copper or any type of metal cold cookie cutter. It is less sticky than the plastic ones. Now there might be one more problem after carving. Because it's too hard to control the temperature and the timing to carve, we wanted to do it sooner rather than later. 
But if you do it too soon, the sugar might still be soft and liquidy. So after you carve out the shape, it might still close up pretty easily. That's totally fine. Just give it another 10 seconds, then re-stamp it again. And done! Look how cute it is! This Sotong Boki is really a great cheap party game that if you make this for your kids for school, you can use a simple shape or provide it with a toothpick rather than a needle. And for all the adults that's watching this game, you can either play with it and put your toffee candy in your coffee or tea later, or you can also do it as a drinking game. Whoever break the shape, gotta take a shot. Now the candy is ready, it's game time! Ready? Ready. Three. Two, one, go. You forgot. You the forgot leaking the part? Mm -hmm. I just wanna, I just wanna, you know. You don't wanna win. Right? <laughs> oh, it's still hot. <laughs> it's not that easy, man. Let me use this thing. <laughs> I thought you were gonna stick with the needle. It kinda hurts. There's no good way to. Right? Yes. Yeah, if we break the This is the in, easiest one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't count. It's fine. You break it! No, I didn't. You gotta show the camera. You can't just hide it. Okay, I'll show the camera. Show them that. It's fine. You're going too fast right now. Slow. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna win anyways. You mess up the first one. That doesn't count. The butt is all crashed. It's, it's broken. It's fine. It's, you dead, man. You dead. Look, if you look at this side, it's fine. Okay, you put it here. You put it here. And what, what the camera will tell you. We'll let the comments decide. Is that okay or am I dead? You're dead. You're so dead. <laughs> you are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got the better one. Because it's fly, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best. If I can get 80% of this, I'll be I'll be happy. You can't uh, burn it, burn the disc, burn this, burn this. Oh. That worked really well. Really? Yeah. I think once. It just comes back together. Yeah. It reforms together. Yeah. Hey, don't you break can't You do just that. broke it. No, you, you stick it back mine, with your so saliva. You it doesn't work. It doesn't you work. You just broke mine. <laughs> Oops. Uh, you're dead. I'm done. I won. You won. Comment, comment down below who won. Look at this. Yeah, look at this chip butt. Look at, it, look at this butt chip. Mine works better. I've done some okay. Chinese. No, I won. I win. Let's I learn. Won. I win. Let's learn some Chinese. I won. <laughs> I won. The word of the day today is Salton Bogi, aka the honeycomb toffee candy, aka the Dalgona. In Chinese, we call it Peng Tang. The second character Tang means sugar, and Peng Tang means Salton Bogi. Thank you for cooking with me to the end. Let me know if you like this recipe by giving this video a thumbs up. It's only gonna take you a second, but it means a lot to me. I make video on YouTube every Thursday, so remember to hit that bell and you'll never miss out. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe on my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next Thursday. Happy Halloween!